Hello, Mzansi, and welcome to African Farming. Middleburg in the Eastern Cape got its name because it's in the middle. It's a halfway point between Bloemfontein and Port Elizabeth. It's the perfect stopover. It's also a place where you'll find farming brothers Mandla and Johnson Mandlendota of Relic Farm. Let's go meet them. Mandlin Dota and his brother Johnson grew up in the Stark Sprite area where their father did contract work on a number of farms and inspired their passion for agriculture. Mandla studied agriculture straight after school while Johnson became a corrections officer, only joining the farming operation much later. Over time, the Mandlin Dotas have built up a large multi farm operation spanning a number of farming disciplines. But despite the size, it's definitely still a family business. Mandla and his wife have three children, while Johnson and his wife have two. Their children are all learning about agriculture and the business side of the operation in some way. So succession plans on the Mandla and Dota farms is well underway. Yo guys, your farming operation is very, very impressive. Wow, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, you so much. much. We're trying. So, Mandla, tell me, how did farming become an important part of your childhood? Well, um, I'm going to mention my father. He actually coached us to be where we are today. He was a farmer himself, and uh, as a child, I made it my hobby to be next to him. Wherever he goes, whatever he did, I was learning from him. Yo, and what about you, Johnson? <laughs> By telling us that, uh, as a man, First, you need to be responsible at that early age, ensuring that you are waking up early to prepare for yes. the day. All right. Now, I want to find out from you, um, Johnson. You guys have multiple farms. There's a farm in Jeffreys Bay. There's a farm in Queenstown. And then there's this one here in Middlebury. Tell me about the operations on the different farms. Okay, these three different farms are having the different operations. The one that we are currently in, specializing in animal production and game. It's also having a accommodation that is a and b The other one in the Je Jeffreys Bay, my brother is going to explain more about it and the other farm. Jeffreys Bay, we specialize in bee farming. The three farms um, are forming one umbrella. Queenstown is a training center. It's also a vegetable farm. It's got a pack house where we, we supply um, shops like your pick and pay, your checkers, your spa group. Now from that one, it's also a training center. It has all the universities of South Africa represented there. We train students and from those students, some of them, they, they end up being permanently employed by us. I love that you talk about training. Uh, Johnson, how important is training and mentorship to you? It is so important because it's something that will last because if you don't train people, it means they, they will not understand what they are doing. Mm. But if you train them, it, it gives them the insight and the importance of uh, uh, knowing exactly what you, you are doing. Also training, it's the sharing of the skills, transforming people, knowing and they need to understand the importance of farming. Two brothers coming together, you're taking over the space, yeah, agriculture and also your brothers enjoying a relationship here. <laughs> <laughs> I think what makes it easy, we grew up uh, together. We went to school together. We were buffing together, eating together. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's a routine. Uh, we do a lot of research. And how best can we help other people to understand that farming is not a desire, but a calling. Farming is not a desire, but a calling. Mm. I love that. <laughs> Our father left us with a legacy to say to us, hard work pays and, and maintain what you have and focus on what you are doing. Never give up. Oh, 
yes. nice. Yes. All right. Well, gents, they say that behind every successful man is a strong and determined woman. So I will leave you guys to continue working while we go and meet those women who have had a hand in making this the way that it is today. Yes, Josin is a very caring man at heart, because eh? always he's there with the goats. Sometimes when I came back from work, he's not here, he's not at home, he's with the goats. The way he loves the, 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 the animals is the way he loves the people. Working with both of them has taught me a lot with regards to their mentorship and their leadership skills because as you know we work closely with them and Mr. Johnson here at the farm so he's a nice person who teaches us a lot with regards to life and with regards to farming skills he's patient with us as we are students and we didn't have a lot of experience coming in here and Mr. Mandler giving us the opportunity and he likes to work with a lot of young people giving the young people an opportunity to embrace their careers and also grow them as individuals. There's a saying, power is gained by sharing knowledge, not hoarding it. We salute the Mandel and Dota brothers for the knowledge they pass on to others. There's so much to see and learn on this farm, but I want to see what keeps it running smoothly, so don't go anywhere. Zanzi, welcome back to African farming. Now, this is what I call living the dream. A game farm within a livestock farm. I mean, that really is amazing. But it takes a lot of work to run a game farm and Oprah Mandla knows all about that. Let's find out more. Mandla, what type of animals do you keep here and how many? We have around 600 to 1,000 animals around here. And we have you know, zebras, kudus, <laughs> springbok, Blaze box, black spring box, uh, water box, and rib box. Well, it's quite a variety. It's a variety, yes. Your farming operation is a mix of tourism and farming. Yes. Now, how has that helped grow the business? It, man, it has helped a lot, Lindy, because um, we actually, we, we, we diversify. On the other side, we're doing vegetables, and this side, is mixed tourism and game. With game farming, hunting, we only start in May till August, and it's dry a bit. There are some uh, game farms that do hunting throughout the year, but we're still battling to get that license, but we are working towards that. Running a game farm is quite different from running a livestock farm. Now, how do you approach grazing for the animals and also animal health? Well, yes, you are correct. Those are two different um, um, things. With, with animals, with our livestock, they graze on flat areas. And uh, with your wild animals, they focus mainly on the mountains, on the, on the bushes. It actually helps us because livestock that we have don't graze on the leaves over there so those wild animals they focus on on making sure they clear those mountains over there what about animal health animal health yes we have a program that we follow uh, with livestock we know when to vaccinate for all the diseases um, your yellow fever uh, ticks and uh, blue tongue and so on but with wild animals, that's why they are called wild animals. They don't get affected easily by those things. Ticks, yes, here and there you'll find one of them limping there and there, but not necessarily um, like your, your livestock animals. Yeah. What's been one of some of the challenges that you've encountered with running a game farm? And are predators an issue? Predators, yes. Uh, we've got a lot of jackals here. Um, um, they, they experience a lot of problems because they catch them while they're lambing, they catch them while they're sleeping. Some of them they don't have sharp eyesight during the night. So yeah, they, 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 they battle, it's a, it's a battle of the wild. <laughs> it's a battle yeah. of the wild. <laughs> yes. What's a good size to run a successful and profitable game farm? I would say from 3,000 hectares to anything 6,000 to 7,000. We have a 7,000 hectare farm 
which is divided. We know that grazing is about 3,000, another 3,000 is irrigation, 1,000 is for game farming. You have so many animals, Manza, and on top of that, the land is huge. Now, how do you keep record of everything? Um, myself and my brother, we're working together in this and to make it a success. We've got systems in place. We've got um, accounting officers. We've got bookkeepers on the farm. If this guy is managing goats, he focuses on goats. This one manages sheep, he focuses on sheep and so on. What is your long-term strategy and goals for this game farm? I want to focus more on bringing tourists over here. One of the things we want to add is uh, mountain bikes, quad bikes. Additional to the game that we have, we want to add species like your giraffes, your velabies, and um, possible rhinos. Um, but we are a bit skeptical on that because of the poaching that is happening around them. But yes, also just to to, 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 to get it running throughout the year. But you, we, need, we, we are in the process of applying for that because for now we are limited. Mm, I can't wait to come back and experience all of that <laughs> side. Thank you so wow, much. Wow, This is just amazing. I am so in love with all of this wildlife and there's still so much more to see. But Mandla, can we continue to explore? Yes, of course. Let's continue. Masand. Yo, yo. I have heard so much. I have literally waited all day to climb into this game viewing vehicle. I'm a city slicker, remember? So this is not something I do often. Unfortunately, I can't ride on this forever. There's still lots to see and lots to do before my visit ends. You don't realize how big this farm actually is until you have to move from one side to the other. But I've never seen an Angora goat with my own eyes. So today is my chance. Let's go check it out. Johnson, I want to start off by clarifying this. What is the difference between these types of goats that you have, which is the Angora, and the normal ones that we're used to? The difference is that uh, this one is a more hair goat, and the, and the other one, which is the poor goat, is for meat. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And mohe fetches good prices, meaning that you need to take very good care of your Angora goats. Now, what does that entail for you? It just means when you are having them, you must take care of them. They need to have a right place where they can graze. And in terms of the nutrition, you need to look after them. Therefore, if you do that, they, they give you the best out of them. And that's how you keep them in good health as well? Yes. All right, I, this yes. farming life is not easy. Now <laughs> tell me, what is the Mohe Empowerment Fund? It is a trust that is aiming to help other f farmers. We are just so grateful that we had the opportunity. What they do, they give you the goats and then they take 25% of your sharing. Then you have a contract of five years with them. After five years, then the goats will become yours. Now tell me about the process of sharing. An Angora goat is meant only for the mohe. Whenever you have the Angora, you need to know you are using it only for getting the mohe. You are sharing each and every six months. You must share. Whether the size is it's, it's long or medium, but it must not be short. But we are making sure within that six months, you meet at least the standard of from 25 to 75 millimeters at least it is acceptable mm. and you also have sheep here so you must make sure that you don't ever mix the wool with the mohair yes it is important because you'll find there is something that they call camp you can identify it even on the sh on, on on the goat but it is important before you share you clean your sharing shed and show that there is no wool because these two must not come together because they contaminate the product. After sorting, you share, you sort, you put your mohe in the clips, you package them according to the, the size of the hair. Then you send it for auction. Since we have said we are the producers, 
we are more responsible standard certified meaning on our clip we need to write we've got a producer number that it will tell if that mohe is in PE, they will just read the producer number. They, they will know exactly that mohe is from Khelek. Now, this experience certainly reminds me of our visit to Abel Navdali, where we touched on traceability with our panel of experts. I am all for quality wool products, but the thought of tracing it back to Khelek Farm is next level. This visit is certainly one for the books. To World Abundance Through Farming Innovations. Oh, cheers to cheers. that. As this day draws to an end, I want to find out from both of you, what is your vision going forward for this already impressive operation? To create a world for the generations to come. What about you, Man? To duplicate this in Africa, as well as in South Africa. And cheers to that. To World Abundance Through Farming Innovation. I couldn't have said it better myself. There certainly is abundance here, thanks to Farming Brothers Mandla and Johnson, as well as the entire team of Khalek Farm. So cheers to them. Now, when we return, we head back to the studio to get more advice and wisdom from our experts. Don't go anywhere. back Mzansi, to African farming. The Eastern Cape is just breathtaking and the time we spent with brothers Mandla and Johnson Mandlendota was filled with wonder and adventure. But yo guys, it was so cold. So I'm glad to be back here surrounded by the warmth of our fires and some familiar faces and experts in agriculture to give us all advice. So welcome gentlemen. Joining us in studio are Francois van der Feyfer from Furmo. Thank you very much. Dr. Tabs Tapelo Makai from Elanco. Yes, indeed. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Admire Mutsvairo from John Deere. Thank you for having us, uh, Lindo. And Praveen Dwarika from Le Mang. Thanks for having us. It's good to have you guys here. Mandla has three children, seemingly all with an interest in being actively involved in the operations in the future, from the game farm right through to the training facility and the guest house. Now, Praveen, how important is succession planning? especially for farmers? It's critical in an industry like farming. Um, this is not a one-day game. So certainly we, we've got to constantly equip the next generation to take over from us. Quite often we only think about the ultimate worst case scenario. But remember that even farmers need to take a break every now and again. And in that time that they need to recharge, somebody needs to take care of their affairs back home. So you know, in, in making sure that you can equip uh, enough of a successor to take over operations at any one point in time. And farming doesn't have that luxury of sitting back and taking time to do the planning and then the handover. Therefore, it's important to start your succession planning very early on in your operation so that at the drop of a hat, somebody can step in your shoes, take over and ensure smooth running of the operation because time is money in farming. Oh yeah, that is very true. Now, Dr. Tubbs, Mantla is involved in helping vaccinate animals in his community. Now, what is the importance of vaccinating your animals and what are the risks associated with diseases spreading from one farm to the other? Before we even talk about vaccination, I'd like to right now salute the brothers. Manda and the brother, they're doing an extraordinary job. Absolutely. And, you know, every week we're talking about networking, we're talking about KOLs, you know, key opinion leaders. And for me, Mandla is exactly that. Now, when it comes to vaccination, uh, remember, we, we're always talking about biosecurity, uh, preventing diseases, and we talk about primary animal health. This is exactly what's happening here. So the importance of vaccinating your animals is, you know, uh, preventing possible diseases that are going on at a certain time of the year, not to be affecting your, your, your livestock. Mm. And, you know, when, when it comes to that, you also, the farmers also need to, you know, mix it up with other uh, supportive, you know, um, injections, you know, your vitamins, you know, especially during the winter when, you know, the nutrition out in the field is poor, which I think, you know, uh, uh, Francois will back me up on that. Mm -hmm. so, so it's very, very important. Yeah. Now, Francois, now that he's 
pointed yeah. at you. So <laughs> I'll direct this question to you. The brothers own such a massive farm with different types of animals. Now, when you plan for feeding, I want to just touch on that. How do you plan for feeding for to accommodate all these different types of animals? It's quite difficult when we have different animals on one farm. And there's a simple solution, and it's an age-old theory that we use fodder flow programming. And it's actually very simple. We divide the year into 12 months, and per month we go and indicate what type of animals we have on the farm and what their production level is at that stage. In other words, are they pregnant or are they lactating? or are they maybe weaned in, in this month. And then we go and match it to the quality of a felt in that very same month. And from there, it's simple math. You take a subtraction sum and you see, do I have a deficiency? Do I need to supplement the deficiency? Or do I have an excess, which maybe I can make hay out of my felt and preserve it for the months that I have a deficiency? So it's really called a fodder flow program, and that way we can plan to have enough food and feed available every month for every animal on the farm. Mm, planning, planning. We always talk about planning always on the planning. show, don't we? Yes, yeah. yes, definitely. <laughs> Admire, forward planning on mechanization is just as important, is it not? That's correct, Lindy. Where planning around mechanization is very important because we've got different seasons in our agricultural space. We've got pl planning season where we prepare the land and we've got planting and harvesting. And around those times, you need to have your equipment ready for them to be able to, to, to work accordingly to the way you want to be. In doing so, you need to be able to understand the warranty system that comes with our equipment. That warranty system allows you to service your equipment at regular intervals, which protects your equipment. You are protecting the value of that equipment. Remember, that is an investment that you're putting on your farm. And in doing so, at the time that you want to resell or trade in, you are able to actually get value out of that equipment. Not to forget our dealer support that is out there, that is there to support you, to be able to ensure that you've got those machines serviced and prepared at the time that you need them to be, to be ready. Outside warranty machines, we've got solutions for parts that also allows you to be able to go and be able to make your equipment ready for the delegated and be able to be ready at the particular time that you want to. All right, gentlemen, let me get some final words from you. Please, let's start with you, Francois. Um, yes, we've been talking a lot about planning, and I would just, just want to reinforce that the farmers also need to plan for the difficult years, the dry years, the drought years, and make sure they have a fodder bank um, on the farm. Mm, absolutely, Dr. Taps. Yeah, I agree 100% with what Francois said. Feed bank, very important, but we're also talking about integrated disease management, meaning that farmers need to be able to have their vaccination plan uh, on paper, you know, the dipping program, you know, dosing program on paper in order for, for them to prevent diseases on their farm. Mm. Praveen, your closing comments? Equipping our next generation of leaders in agriculture is critical to ensure continuity in the sector and succession planning seeks to do exactly that and farmers should not take that for granted. Start from day one. Okay, at my Maintenance of equipment is very important. It actually reduces your, your downtime at the farm and also keeps your machines running efficiently and you always be able to, to generate maximum yield from your equipment. Sure. It's been such a learning curve to see game, merino and angora farming in practice. Thank you, Mandla and Johnson, for your hospitality and the good food. Thank you guys for sharing all this information with myself and the viewers at home. Zanzi. Thank you as always for watching. And do remember that you can engage with us on our social media platforms via hashtag African Farming. You can also visit our website, africanfarming.com. I'll see you again next week. And do remember, we farm better together.